All right, welcome back. We are with Robert Zirkelbach, um, spokesperson for the American Health Insurance Plan. This is a uh, this is a group that uh, went out for an audit with Price Waterhouse Coopers to figure out what the Senate Finance Committee bill would do to uh, the cost of insurance for American families. Thank you for that. What they conclude is this: in 10 years, the average American family's health costs would go up about $4,000 per family. For the individual, about $17 to $1,800 per person. Uh, Linda Douglas is the communications director of the White House for All Things Healthcare. She said this uh, to Mike Emanuel just about an hour ago: "This is a self-serving analysis from the insurance industry, one of the major opponents of health insurance reform." It comes on the eve of a vote that will reduce the industry's profits. It is hard to take seriously. The analysis completely ignores the critical policies will lower costs for those that have insurance, expand coverage, and provide affordable health insurance options to millions of Americans who are priced out of today's health insurance market or are locked out by unfair insurance company practices. And Robert Zirkelbach is back with you here. Your reaction to that from the White House minutes ago. Well, uh, I want to be very clear that we support comprehensive uh, bipartisan health care reform. It's something that we have been working on for more than three years. Uh, in fact, we uh, support the very insurance market reforms that uh, we are talking about today as part of comprehensive health care uh, reform. Uh, but to make those reforms work, everybody needs to participate in the health care system. We've learned that lesson from the experience uh, in the states. Uh, and it's unfortunate that several of the provisions that are currently being considered are going to have the unintended consequence of causing health care costs to increase. That's the opposite of what health care reform is supposed to be accomplish. Uh, we're providing this data so that we can uh, try to find a way to, to fix this so that we can make health care coverage more affordable and to put our health care system on a more but sustainable this is what the White House and fiscally saying responsible saying that path. your analysis ignores the critical policies that will lower costs for those that have insurance. I mean, what, what, what your analysis is all about is dollars. Um, and uh, I'm just looking at the statement right here, and the direct comment from the White House about the cost that you figure into this, uh, this audit is about these critical policies that will lower costs for those that have insurance. What is in the Senate finance bill that you like that will indeed lower those costs for Americans? Uh, well, well, we need to do more uh, on the cost. There is not a lot that, uh, that really focuses on making coverage uh, more affordable. We, we strongly support the insurance market reform so that everybody has guaranteed access to coverage. There are no more pre-existing condition exclusions. But to make it work, everybody needs to be required to participate. Uh, and we need to have system-wide efforts to make health care coverage more affordable. There's some uh, pilot projects and some initial first steps in Medicare. But as the report shows, if you focus on Medicare alone, all that's going to do is, uh, is increase health care costs for people with private coverage and that's not uh, sustainable uh, earlier we got this the analysis from the White House now the analysis is designed to reach a conclusion that benefits the industry uh, does your analysis in the end just benefit the insurance industry uh, not at all. What the analysis is going to do is it's going to uh, help policymakers to, d to craft a health care reform proposal that's going to best meet the needs of the American people. Uh, we've heard from families and small businesses who have said that rising health care costs are their number one concern. That's what we need to really be focusing on here. And unfortunately, some of these provisions take us in the opposite direction. Uh, you were in, uh, quoted in an article last week uh, about the profits for health insurance uh, with, throughout the industry. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we've heard some astonishing figures throughout this debate about how companies within health care are making huge amounts of money. Uh, you say that's simply not true. You say United Healthcare had sales increased by about 3.8 percent, uh, sorry, a 3.8 percent profit margin last year. Uh, you also say WellPoint, another big health care provider, 4.1 percent, and Aetna had 4.5 percent. That's according to uh, data that we got from the Bloomberg, uh, Bloomberg agency out of New York. Your argument is that the health care industry uh, profits by the same amounts of other normal American industries across the board today. Uh, so, in effect, are, are these exaggerations about the profits that health insurance companies are making today, Robert? Oh, there's been a tremendous amount of mis misinformation out there about health plan profits. Fortune magazine uh, did an analysis uh, and found out that in 2008, uh, average profit margin in the health insurance industry was 2.2 percent, uh, which is 35th on the list of industries. It's much less than many other industries, and particularly less than other industries within the healthcare sector. Uh, and so, uh, what the data show is that uh, profits are not what's driving rising healthcare costs in this country. And then, if we want to get uh, uh, health care costs under control, we need to focus on the underlying medical cost drivers. Uh, Robert Zirkelbach, uh, thank you for coming in today and thank you for giving well, us the you. amount of time that you got and taking all our questions here. Uh, it's a big deal and tomorrow it gets even bigger. Robert, thank you. We'll speak again.